may I please show myself Kelly plus one departing Honokanaya headed for Kelly Kahiki. Good copy, Kamala. The island and the reserve is first and foremost a cultural reserve. Because of it, everything else falls within that. So one of the areas we're heading to now uh, is a highly cultural significant site. It's called Kale Ikahiki. Um, literally translated, it means the pathway to Tahiti. Uh, that gives us some insight. A couple of things. Um, the the Ili or the land division that it's in is called Kale Ikahiki. The specific point that we're going to be going to is called Kale Ikahiki. Um, the channel out there that we came through is called Kale Ikahiki. And the wind that comes off of that point is also called Kale Ikahiki. So just the repetitious use of the name gives us some insight into the importance that it, it, it had and, or it played um, in navigation. Um, with uh, the Hawaiians. We just arrived in a um, very um, significant area. Um, this ili we're in, or this land division, is Kele Ikahiki. The mission statement is to provide safe access to Kaholawe and to serve as a crossroads, if you will, the Pico, to um, past and future generations um, to rehabilitate, to revegetate, to reclothe. Re um, the island with uh, native vegetation which in return is going to help protect our marine ecosystem and help the coral reefs. With the work that our restoration team led by Paul Higashino is doing, um, just in my 15 years that I've been a part of Kaho Olave, I just visually can see a difference. I remember as a child flying over um, the island with it used to be Aloha Airlines at the time, and you'd see this perpetual red ring of just dirt that was coming off the island. Um, now it's it's not as it's not as common. Um, only through great storm events or large surf or heavy rains, then it'll come out. That plume will come out again. But just that that indicator alone um, shows a progress being made, a revegetating of the island, and again the that in return helping to um, heal the marine ecosystem. I think uh, the Hawaiians knew all along that the connection between Mauka and Makai is so strong and um, that influx of uh, sedimentation onto our reefs, smothering the coral, stressing the coral, um, which we all know is, is the, the basis or the, the foundation of a marine, near shore marine ecosystem. Um, getting that healthy, rehabilitating that will only strengthen and um, further improve our marine environment. I think for me, even before I started working on Kaho Olave, like you'd said, I wasn't fully always aware, but now becoming a part of the, of the movement, if you will, of, of Kanaloa, of Kaho Olave, and helping to um, heal, heal Kanaloa, um, it's our job to those people who don't know to educate them. And I would say that, again, it's, it's first and foremost a, a, a cultural sanctuary. It's a, it's a cultural reserve and that spirituality needs to be kept intact when every day we're so dependent or on every other island there's there's everything from agricultural influx or agricultural presence or um there's it's a place to become grounded i guess what i'm saying where we can try to reconnect with our environment unplug our cell phones um not be just texting on phones but we can you can interface with with another person through Laulima, through work. You can interface with your environment in a way I think when we're on the outer islands, we sometimes lose, lose track of. It's a way to recognize again that man and environment are equal. Neither supersedes each other. I think a lot of times in our modern environment, we lose sight of that. And this is a place where we can reconnect culturally. This is a place we can reconnect with the environment, whether it be terrestrial or marine, and just to have a glimpse, maybe not the same viewpoint, but a glimpse of what our forefathers saw, what Hawaiians you know, saw, what they dealt with, what they were able to accomplish. And um, that, that in itself is always very impressive.
It's always two things. It's a sense of, it's, it's usually always a sense of, there's more that needs to be done. We still have so much to do. There's so much to do still. Um, and then after that, but then it's a recollection of what we have done already. And like you had said, the change we've seen over time and the pride and, and the humility to know that I've, I've been able to contribute to this. So it's those two things. It's a feeling of um, work that's so much work that still needs to be done, an urgency, but yet it's also, you know, I have pride and there's, with that is the humility of being privileged to, to work out here.